Hey guys, you wonder what is the first mortality threshold VT1, uh, what is purpose and how to estimate it. I will try and provide some answers showing you some cases and hopefully that will help you train in more accurate zones. What is the first ventilatory threshold? In a nutshell, uh, when you start from rest and you start to walk and run faster and faster, so the exercise intensity increase, you will get more and more ox oxygen, more and more air in your lung, but that will increase linearly. And there will be a point whereby this increase will start to be far more steep up to the second ventilatory threshold where there will be again another inflection and you will have to increase the amount of air you're getting in far quicker than the increase in uh, exercise intensity. More or less, this first voluntary threshold uh, corresponds to when you start to accumulate lactate in your, in your body, in your blood. Uh, so the usual figures given is more or less two millimeter two millimole of um, lactate per liter of blood and the second threshold is more or less four millimeter four millimole per liter of course it depends uh, by individual so some it could be six for some other it could be three um, but really to have a rough idea uh, the usual data are four and two so when you are at rest, you are at one, two, and here you are at two, and then it starts to increase. And to buffer this excess uh, lactate, uh, or more, more precisely, the CO2 um, that's produced by buffering the acid metabolites, you need to you need to breathe faster. So probably it's not more that you need to get more air and more oxygen, it's probably more that you need to remove the extra uh, dioxide, carbon dioxide. Uh, prior to this VT1, fats are a majority source of fuel and only small amounts of lactate are being produced. So they can be recycled and they don't accumulate in the body. So um, you see that these VT1 is quite interesting in terms of phys physiology because um, that's probably a point that you want to be below for most of your training um, because uh, like that it increases the chance of you using fat which is um, the fuel that uh, for example Dr. Phil Maffeton recommend to use or to train as much as possible and also that means uh, you will put the less stress on your body. So the, um, yeah, it's a good idea to be to train most of the time below this point. Um, so it's quite important to, to figure it out. Um, I would even argue that it's important to train fairly below this point to be sure that um, we're not putting too much stress on the body. Um, so really that should be the kind of really upper limit of most of your easy run or cycling or whatever. Um, so how do you try and figure out this threshold? Um, so you could use um, a lactate, a blood, you know, tester, blood tester to figure out your lactate production uh, per intensity, or you could go to the labs and have a, um, uh, you know, uh, mask set up and, and they can analyze your breathing pattern and so forth. But obviously that's expensive and cumbersome. So is there a way to figure it out um, without going to the lab? So um, it has been uh, suggested that indeed people could use the cardiac drift to assess um, the ventilatory threshold. So um, I think it's Joe Frill. Geoffrey, um, who is one of the advocates of this method, so VT1 cardiac drift. Yeah, 
so that's the idea of decoupling. Um, so basically, uh, it suggests that you will uh, run or do some sport for one hour at a relatively fixed intensity. So probably you will use a given heart rate to sustain the effort. And as time goes by, there will be a cardiac treat whereby the heart rate will shift upward. And the idea is that as long as the difference between the beginning and the end in terms of um, increase of heart rate is no more than 5%, then you're below your VT1. If you're training above, especially if you're at the uh, upper end, but first of all, you will not be able to sustain uh, one hour because more or less VT2 is what you can sustain for one hour. So let's say you're somewhere in between here. Uh, most likely your uh, cardiac drift will be uh, more higher than 5%. Um, and it will be 5% exactly at this point and probably lower than 5% below. So uh, I did try that, so I ran for one hour, uh, try to sustain a relatively consistent um, pace, and I observed the difference between my heart rate at the beginning and heart rate at the end. So you can see that it creeps up indeed. Um, and I've got a, um, a tool that I downloaded from Garmin Connect uh, that will compute the cardiac drift in percent. Um, so it's done for me. And as you can see here, boom, I'm reaching 5% at the end, even a bit more. So probably I think what I did there was a little bit above my uh, VT1. And the answer was, so 167 percentage for me, that's 80% of my uh, true max. Uh, I've got a high true uh, max heart rate, 210. That's just genetics, nothing you can do about. It doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it's good, just what it is. So anyway, 80%. In terms of pace, uh, that's, let's say, 522, speed 11, speed 2 km per hour. At uh, the end, I sprinted a little bit, which was stupid, but you know, uh, I was also, the first time I was doing a one hour time trial, so I tried to, to, to increase that a bit. I don't think it um, screwed the, the result too much. Um, and also another point, at the beginning my heart rate was very low compared to the speed. That is a bit suspicious because usually I need more heart rate to sustain 11 km per hour. So I'm not sure what happened at the beginning. If it was a bug in in the watch or my heart, my um, uh, chest trap, I don't know. So I'm not sure the results are super accurate for all those reasons, but I know that indeed this kind of speed, 11 km per hour, I know that's kind of my sweet spot whereby I feel quite comfortable, uh, a bit challenged, but not too much. Um, so I suspect that my VT1 is probably a little bit below 11 km per hour. Uh, maybe if I say 5.30 to be safe, that would be my VT1 and in terms of heart rate, 79% or whatever. So yeah, probably more or less that. And I think it's consistent because for most, most people, the um, VT1 is between 77 and 80% of true max heart rate. Uh, so that's um, interesting data to know. Um, most of my training, anyway, um, is done far below that. Uh, not that I'm completely uh, Mafeton compliant because of this uh, huge max heart rate. I cannot really sustain, you know, follow the um, 180 formula. It would be far too low for me. Um, so yeah, most of the time I'm, I'm tra targeting targeting uh, one one fifty, which is 
Yeah, 71%. Um, and yeah, most of the time I try to, to be in you know, the, the zone two, so below 75%. Uh, and if I can even closer to the 70%. Um, and what else? So let's let, look at the laps. Uh, so you can see the, um, as time goes by, the heart rate is increasing. But to be fair, uh, my pace was getting faster and faster. Probably I got too excited. Um, so yeah, if I, probably I should redo the test one day and try and be more consistent. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter to me too much. I, I'm pretty sure that my VT, VT1, I've got several clues that tell me that my VT1 is more or less around 80% um, of my heart rate and uh, max heart rate, and that uh, the speed is probably a bit below 11 km per hour. Um, and as anyway, I try to train rel relatively lower than that to be safe. Um, I think I think that's okay. But that's interesting to know. Um, and one of the goal obviously is to push that. I'm already very happy because um, 11 km per hour for me when I started running, you know, three years ago, I suppose, uh, that was um, that was something I couldn't sustain for even. 10 minutes, I mean, that was very, very fast for me. And now it's um, something that is relatively easy. So I'm very happy with that. Um, if I can improve further, that's obviously uh, my goal, but um, let's see. Uh, what else? So, so worth mentioning, so um, Dr. Stephen Saylor, so the brain behind the 80-20 method, uh, is training his own daughter. And um, he just told ask her to train in is zone two and is not more specific than that and turns out she herself decide for whatever reason to run at a um, pace that is about 70 percent of her true max heart rate well she's uh, very good so for her it's uh, already um, 11 km per hour at 70 percent of ma max heart rate uh, that's how good she is um, but that's interesting so that means she's really training very low intensity most of the time and also if you're interested when she trains um, at higher intensity she take it relatively easy uh, she would probably be more like low zone 5 or even in zone 4 um, yeah, because it's really important for her not to overtrain uh, for many reasons you can, you can watch the videos on dr Seiler's channel if you're interested um, anyway, so I will wrap up this video. Hope that um, you found some interesting bit, and um, and if you want to do the test, the one hour test, uh, I would be interested to to know your result. Thank you guys. Bye.